Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of our top down sword fighting game series. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, the link will be on screen now. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So first, we have to fix something. As you can see, the player is facing the wrong way. This is an easy fix. We're going to point in direction, minus 19. So as you can see, it works now. Then, we have 3 new sprites. For now, we're only going to use the blob sprite, so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. So, we have 3 kinds of blobs. We have the normal blob. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see this. We've got the evil blob, which explodes when you hit it with the sword. And we've got the bonus blob, the best of them all. So, we're going to go to code now. Basically, what we want to do is spawn the clones from every direction and they're going to follow our player. So, for this, we're going to need to spawn some clones first. So, when clicked, we're going to hide because we don't need this original sprite. Then, I'm going to set size to 700% because my costumes are tiny, but you should change this for your own project. Then we're going to use a forever block and we're going to create clones of myself. Then we're going to wait, pick random, 0.4 to 1.3 seconds. Now we want this to go to any of the positions from anywhere on the screen. So we're going to have to use the if else block. So we're going to just sandwich it in between these two blocks and if pick random 0 to 1 equals zero and it's going to be on the y and else it's going to be on the x so i'll show you what i mean in a second then again we're going to get out two if else blocks and put them in there so we're going to duplicate this if pick random zero to one equals zero and duplicate it again for here so in the first block we'll say go to x minus 250 y pick random minus 180 to 180 else we're going to go to x 250 and y pick random minus 180 to 180 then we're going to repeat this process but instead of having it in the y we're going to have it in the x and it's going to be minus 250 to 250 now these numbers aren't random, they're actually how far the screen goes in this scratch screen. So, and y is going to be minus 180, duplicate 180. Okay, so now we've got all these clones spawning in, but they don't do anything. So, to actually start them, we're going to use when I start as a clone. Now as you can remember, we have it hidden, so we want to show we're going to choose between the three types of blobs. So if else, if 7 is bigger than pick random 1 to 10. So as you can see, we're using this a lot. And just duplicate it, put it in else. If pick random 1 to 3 equals 3, then we're going to have the bonus. So switch costume to bonus one. And for this specific one, we're going to set our size to 600% because this one has an outline while the others don't. So its size should be smaller. Else we're going to switch costume to Evo one. And for the first one, we're going to switch our costume to normal one. So as you can see, normal is the least rare and bonus is the most rare now again we're going to use the one i start as a clone and we're going to make an animation now so forever it's going to wait 0 0.5 seconds next costume then we're going to wait another 0 0.5 seconds and now we're going to switch costume to costume number minus one so this is basically like a last costume. And let's just get rid of this block here. This kind of reminds me of what we had in this player costume. Okay, now that we have the animation done, so you can see the animation here. And look at the blob spawning. It looks really nice. 
we're going to have them move to the player. And this is where things get a bit complicated. But don't worry, we're gonna get through this. So when I start as a clone again, this basically serves as a when green flag clicked, but for clones. We're going to set our brightness effect to zero. Because when the sprite dies, we're going to set the brightness effect to 100. Then we're going to set rotation cell left to right, just like the player. We're going to point towards player. So it's going to move towards it. And we're also going to point in direction. Direction. Minus 10. So you might be wondering why we have this second direction. So basically, if we had a point in direction player, it was going to be too hard. So this makes it easier for our player to dodge. Then we're going to repeat 12 times. Move 6 steps. Then we're going to repeat until touching the edge. And again, six steps. Then we're going to repeat another two times. Move six steps. So what does this do? Basically, it's going to get out of the edge. So this repeat until touching edge works. That's going to repeat until touching the edge. And then it's going to repeat another two times so it goes out smoothly. Then it's going to delete this clone. But there is a problem. What if it gets hit by a sword? Well, don't worry. We're going to create a block for this exact purpose. Let's just call it die. And then we can click on OK. So this is going to be like a death detection. So put die here, here, and here. Then if we are touching the player, then we are going to broadcast game over because we lost. And that's going to be a new message. And if we are touching the sword, and the costume name of the sword is Sword Swing, or if the costume name of the sword is Sword Swing 2, then this enemy is going to die. And we can throw that out in the trash. So you might be wondering what I just did. So basically here is our normal sword. And then we've got two swinging swords. So basically if the enemy hits the sword and it's not swinging, then it shouldn't die. So we're going to have a new variable and we're going to call it score. Now if it dies, it's going to change the score by 1. And it's not only going to be 1 because if we have a bonus, we're going to do 1 times a new variable called bonus. So with this bonus, everything you hit in the next 10 seconds, you will get more points. Then we will have the dying animation, so repeat 25 times, change the brightness effect, by 5. After this is completed, we'll get out an if else block and an if block. If you enjoyed this video till now, please leave a like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. So now, if the costume name contains evil, so it doesn't matter if it's evil 1 or evil 2, then we're also going to broadcast game over because it's going to explode. Else, if the costume name contains bonus, then we're going to broadcast bonus. And that's going to be a new message. Then we're going to delete this clone right here. Okay, so now let's actually code the bonus. So we're going to go back into the player sprite and when I receive bonus, set bonus to 5, then wait 10 seconds and set bonus to 1. The reason we're setting bonus to 1 is because if it was set to 0, 
then we would be having change score by zero. Okay, now we can code the game over screen. When clicked, we're gonna hide. And then when I receive game over, show. Go to front layer and then stop all. So this is going to stop the project completely. Now we are going to code the high score. So go to player, then when clicked forever, and we're going to make a new variable and call it high score. And this is going to be a cloud variable. That's going to give you a warning and just click OK. And by the way, you can hide the bonus. Let's just make it look a bit better. And high score will go in this corner. Now, if the score is bigger than the high score, then we're going to set the high score to the score. That's pretty simple. There's only one sprite left until this entire game is completed. The upgrade. So this is how it looks like. And when you hit it, it should destroy all the enemies on screen. So when clicked, we're going to make a new variable and we're going to call it die. Forever, we're going to set the brightness effect to zero and the ghost effect to 20. And this ghost effect is just for a cool effect. And we can hide the variable die. Then we're going to go to front layer, set size to 700% and we're going to hide then we're going to wait pick random 8 to 11 seconds and then we're going to show up anywhere on the screen but just so it looks better we're not going to use the go to random position we're going to go to pick random minus 195 to 195 and Y pick random minus 140 to 140. Then we're going to show. So it's going to wait a period of time where it's hidden and that's going to show. Then it's going to be there until it touches the player. And then it's going to broadcast a new message called die. And after this, we will change the effects. So we'll repeat 20 times, change the brightness effect by 5, and change size by 20. So now when I receive die, we're going to set die to 1, and we're going to repeat 20 times. So it's going to wait the exact amount of time as it did here. And we're going to set die to zero. Then we're going to go into blob. Let's just scroll down a bit so we have some free space. When I start as a clone forever, if die equals one, then we're going to die. So repeat 25 times. We can just get rid of that. Change brightness effect by five. Then we're going to change score by one times bonus and finally delete this clone so let's try out the game now so we have these enemies coming through i just see the bonus Ooh, again good okay oh and that was game over so as you can see right now the score and high score are the same but when we click again oh it seems like we have forgotten something. So really quickly, we're going to go up to a one clicked, like right here, and set our score to zero. Okay, now we're good. And as you can see, there is still another problem. These enemies are going up onto you. So we're going to go to back layer like that now let's also try out the bonus okay dodge that dodge that hit dodge oh this is getting kind of stressful okay hit hit okay there's an update let's go let's go and as you can see it killed all the enemies on screen so i really hope you enjoyed that video if you did please leave a like subscribe and click on the video on screen right now
It has many great scratch hacks which can help you program easier and faster.